Now we're going to have a look at internet principles of operation and how it fits into the IGCSE computer science. It's a little bit of a confusing title, um, but the components of it aren't really that difficult. All we're really having a look at is how a piece of, well, a packet of data will travel from your computer to a server and back and the things that it will see on the way and the components of that transfer such as IP addresses and MAC addresses. So in the specification, this is what it says. It says, uh, show an understanding of the role of a browser, show an understanding of the role of an ISP, show an understanding of what's meant by um, HTTP and HTTPS and HTML, distinguish between HTML structure and presentation and show an understanding of concepts of MAC address, IP, um, URL and cookies. Okay, so firstly, we're just going to have a look at how it fits together in terms of data going from your computer to your server or well, someone else's server and what the different parts are in between. So when you request information from the internet, you're either probably going to do that by typing something into the uh, address bar at the top of your browser or clicking on a link. When you do that, what happens is that data, that request gets uh, packed together in a piece of, well, represented by binary information and it gets sent off to the server. Generally, the first place that it will go to that we need to think about, and this is a very sort of, um, shortened version of it but this is what we need to look at for the IGCSE so if you were doing a level and certainly if you're doing a degree there will be lots more steps in here and there might be some more variables but for the IGCSE and for the specification this is how we need to know it so the first thing that we're going to come across is the firewall or at least the first thing that we need to know about in the GCSE all the firewall does when you're requesting information from the internet is it checks what's going out of your computer Okay, most of the time you won't realize it's doing that because it's not had a problem with the data that's going out. But your firewall is designed to check everything that's going out of your computer and everything that's coming in of your com into your computer and act as sort of a filter. They contain a list generally of what's called a blacklist um, and also probably a whitelist which contains uh, pieces of information about the data that the firewall should look for. So for example, uh, it might be a particular port that is looking at that shouldn't be sending data out or shouldn't be receiving data and it will generally pop up in the bottom right corner of your screen and say this program is trying to access the internet we don't think it should and what do you want to do about it or it might be that something's coming into your computer and it says this information is coming into your computer we don't think it should uh, what do you want to do about that so all you need to know about a firewall for the IGCSE is that it filters the traffic okay so the things going in and the things going out and it makes sure that they are acceptable, I guess is a, a term that's okay. But it, it generally runs on a list of what's okay and what's not okay that's been pre-programmed into it. And then you as a user can add more things in there. So you can say, well, this port shouldn't be sending information out. Or you can say this program shouldn't be accessing the internet. Okay, if it's gone through that, okay, then it goes across to the router. Your router will have a specific IP address. The IP address is the physical address of the location of your network. It's not the same as a MAC address. Your PC at this end will have a MAC address. Every single device that's connected to a network must have a MAC address and they're hard coded onto them by the manufacturer. The MAC address identifies that physical computer, whereas your IP address identifies the actual network. Your IP address, the internet can see that. The internet has nothing to do with your MAC address. It doesn't care about it. The server doesn't care about your MAC address. However, your router does. So your router will receive information about what has, which device has requested information from the internet. And that is identified through the MAC address. The IP address is the address of this thing here. Okay. Although you can also have sort of subdomains that would relate to individual computers on the network, but we don't need to look at that for the IGCSE. So all you need to know is that the MAC address identifies the actual individual device that's requesting information and the IP address identifies the network so that connect all of those computers that are in your house their connection to the outside world so the request goes to the router and the router prepares that request to go out to the world the next place it will go generally is what's called a DNS server or a DNS it's a domain name system how that works is let's say you type in facebook.com and you press enter Facebook.com doesn't actually really exist. What does exist 
are a list of IP addresses that Facebook use. However, to save us having to type in IP addresses, like long lists of numbers with decimal points between them, what we do is we type in words. However, something along the way has got to match up those words with the IP addresses. And this is what the DNS does. The DNS is like a phone book. It gets, num it gets um, things like facebook.com and google.com and it matches them up to IP addresses so we can then request the data from the server. So without a DNS, you would have to type 1.192.55.76, whatever, a long list of numbers every time you wanted to access a specific website. Okay, so this saves us a lot of time because we don't have to remember IP addresses anymore. We can just remember the words that are associated with them, which is called the URL, the Uniform Resource Locator, and we can type that in and it gets matched up to the IP address by the DNS. What happens then is a little bit confusing because actually that, that data goes back to the router. Okay, so the IP address that we request goes back to the router from the DNS and then it kind of hops over to your ISP. Okay, so your ISP, your internet service provider, gets the information of which IP you're looking for and it connects you to the rest of the world. ISPs supply you with a lot of things. Firstly, they supply you with your IP address. Without your ISP, you might not have an IP address. Secondly, they probably supply you or at least lease from another company and supply to you the cables underground and the cables that go to your house that allow you to access the network. And finally, they act as sort of like a hub between your computer and other networks around the world. Your ISP isn't directly connected to the server that you're looking for, okay, but it is connected to other ISPs around the world that are then connected to the servers or other um, hubs around the world, okay? So without your ISP, you don't actually need an ISP. You could, of course, set one up yourself, but you'd have to lease the cable in from someone. You'd have to um, figure out some way of creating direct connections to the hubs that create connections to the servers. So the ISP basically makes it easy for you and leases all these little um, services and physical things out to you for a fee. From there, it might go to a proxy server. A proxy server works in two different ways, or at least the same way, but for two different purposes. Firstly, your proxy server can store information from the server to make it easier to access um, for your computer. Okay, so let's say we've got lots and lots of commonly used data that lots and lots of people are always requesting from this server. We can store slightly more local versions of them on a proxy server so that we don't always have to go to the server to get this data. We can just go to the proxy server and back, okay? Because maybe this proxy server is in a geographically closer location to you and maybe somewhere that's relatively geographically in between you and the server and therefore it makes the connection a little bit quick and it lowers the amount of work that the final server is doing. A proxy server can also be used to hide who you are. A server will identify who you are from the IP address that has requested the data from it. If you don't use a proxy server, then the server can see that because it has to be able to see the IP address to be able to send it back to you. However, some people use proxy servers to hide their IP addresses so that the server only knows that this server requested it, so it sends the data to there, and this server sends it to you. It's the equivalent of asking someone to pass some information on to someone else, but telling them not to say that it was you that requested it. The person on the other end won't know who requested this information because we've got this middleman here. From there, the data is packed together, whatever data it is you requested, so it might be an HTML page, sort of like forward slash index.html, and it is sent all the way back to your browser. When your browser receives this HTML, it's your browser's job to unpack those bits and bytes and let you know what they're supposed to look like on the screen. You don't need a browser, really, to open an HTML file, okay? I can open an HTML file on Notepad, or you can open one on any text editor. However, it's not going to look very nice. It's just going to look like tags and code. Your browser's job, as well as many other things, is to supply you with a way of converting HTML into text and images so it looks nice. Okay? Um, other things that your browser can do if you're asked in an exam is you can create bookmarks on it so it can make it easier for you to um, access pages. It can also deal with the encryption 
So for example, the um, HTTPS SSL encryption to make sure that your connection is secure. Okay, but we'll look at SSL and HTTPS in another video. So these are the main components between your computer and the server. When that HTTP request gets sent back, okay, that HTML page gets sent back, it arrives here, okay, at your router. This is where your MAC address comes in, usually, because your MAC address is the identifier of the physical computer that made that request to the router. So it might be that you've got 25 computers in your house, and the router needs to know which computer made that request from this server over here. So the way that it can do that is it can use your MAC address to identify which specific computer made that request or phone or tablet or whatever. The information again will go through the firewall because although we requested a specific thing from the server, we don't know what it's going to send back. So the firewall will make that check and it will check whether it's something that we're going to allow. It gets sent back to your computer and it gets displayed to you. So these are the key terms that we need. Okay. So MAC address, which is the physical address or the physical identifier of your network device, um, which is made up of half of the MAC address is the manufacturer's uh, identifier and half of it is your specific device. We've got the IP address, which is either in IPv4 and IPv6. This is an older IP address, which is made in the decimal number system. But because we started running out of those, we had to move a lot of things to IPv6, which is an hexadecimal, and we've got a lot more possibilities there. The firewall, which filters your traffic. The router, which is the thing that you use to connect to the internet. It acts as a bridge between the outside world and the computers inside your house, and it routes all the traffic to the necessary computer. DNS, which is domain name system, which matches your, the words that you're typing in the URL, like facebook.com, to the uh, IP address, which is the server. Proxy server, which is that server, if we look here, that goes between the actual server that you're requesting and you, so that it sends information quicker, and also this one can't see who you are. And finally, the server, which is the thing on the end, which holds all of the information. And that's about what you need to know for the GCSE level of this. There are a little bit more, um, there's a little bit more information on SSL that we'll look at in a different video. And also in another video, just a shortened one, we'll look at the specific parts of a URL. The sort of questions that they've been asked in the past are specific questions about what these things do. What does a firewall do? What does a router do? What's an IP address do? What's a MAC address do? But in terms of longer, more extended questions, there have been some six and seven mark questions which have asked you to describe exactly what happens between requesting a website and it being displayed on your page. And that's where you can go through this information here. Okay, and you can talk about the different paths, uh, the path um, and the different points on the path that it makes and how it gets back to you. Okay, so that's it.